Christopher Stieg is the creator, the inventor, the brains behind the Clever app. Uh, he's also a two-time Stanley Cup champion. Uh, what's up, brother? How are we doing? Oh, I am good. How are you? Oh, you don't sound good at all. You sound, fl- nope. you sound frustrated. Rain- Another rainy day in Ontario. Yeah, I know. Tell you. I know. Alberta, Alberta right now, sunshine and blue sky. Oh, you should go back. Uh, yeah. You should go back there. That's I've been act- trying to tell the wife. Yeah, like it's, as you know, it's time. It's time for you to now. get out. Don't you yep. see those ads around the city? Like move to Alberta ads. Like it's bigger. You could get a bigger house. You know, you could oh, way it, bigger. You, that's what I'm saying. You could, buddy. This is the move for you. Finally, we figured out what to do. This is it. You got to go. You got to go. You can make clever Alberta. Like that could be fine. You could leave somebody run the the ship here, right? The leagues. Uh, we have uh, we have good people in the background. That's so that's what stable. I'm saying, man. You know what? I'm happy for you. Congrats on your future move to back to yeah. Alberta, back to where you belong. Uh, okay, so how did? What do you think about the playing tonight thing for Austin Matthews? Because yeah, he is sitting on 69. I'm a little torn about it. But, like, what's what's the move here? Keith goes to him and says, what do you want to do, and that's just it? You have to play him. You have to play him. And, you know, when, when did we talk about this a couple of weeks ago? How are they going to manage Matthews coming down the stretch? At that time, I think he was seven goals away. If he was four goals away, understandably so, how you talk about these situations, even, you know, when we're talking about him not going on for the empty net or stuff like that, like, these are massive milestone situations that don't come along often. And you as a coach need to be with your player, be with the team that is focusing all their energy into getting 70. If this team was fighting for a playoff spot and they understood that the energy would be better to go in towards a playoff spot than to getting your teammate a milestone that has barely ever been reached in the history of hockey, then I totally understand it. But just, he has to play. He has to play. They have to put him on in the situations to try to get him to this milestone. This guy has put his heart and soul into this season. Mm. 69 goals, man. Now, as a coach, you got to get on the same frequency. You Mm. have to get on the same frequency. It can't be in post games. Oh, well, you know, this is annoying. Shut up. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Like, This is going to be one of those things in 20 years, Keith's going to be sitting at home and he's going to look back and he's just going to realize I should have just done this for him or I should have just supported this situation more. Because when you're in the eye of the hurricane, sometimes you don't know. These are things and situations that don't come around and he needs his coach to be on the same frequency Mm -hmm. and have his, he's always had his back, but just outwardly as well, right? To the public, to the people, whatever you put out, be on the same frequency. Bro, I'm, I'm with you about this. So I think Matthew should play as well. I think he should be going for the milestone. And and I shouldn't, I don't think anybody should be overly concerned about it. Like I, I get if you're Matthews and you hit 70, right? Or you, you miss 70 and you play this game and you go in the postseason against the Bruins. And if you lose, you got to know what everybody's going to say, right? Like, oh, wow, you already Could played. Can you imagine the what ifs the rest of yeah, your career? No, that's it. That's it. You got to do it. Like you, you got to do it. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to be like the, and you're not supposed to be, you are the alpha goal scorer in the NHL. Like, I, I don't want you to back away from this challenge. I don't want you to back away from this challenge. I actually do. I do think it's important the way that Keith handles this. And I don't really love, I, I, I'm not trying to be overly critical here, but yeah, I hated the quote that he had about the fans where he's like, obviously the distraction, it doesn't help us. It's like, what are you doing? They're what, fans what that are, are you pe- doing? that's what I'm We've saying. Been begging them to cheer forever. I know. And now you're saying this. And then yesterday, even I get being non-committal, but even the line about the 12 healthy forwards, you're like, Hey man, how about you just say it's going to be in Austin or like, we want him to play or not. Don't approach him at all with this conversation, trying to insinuate any level of pressure on him. Like no offense to Sheldon Keefe. And I agree this. your job security as the head coach of this team is way less important to everybody than whatever Austin Matthews is feeling. And, and this is the part that I really want to ask you about is, do you believe I had a bit of a theory yesterday and I, I still believe it? Like, um, so the Colts, right? They could have gone 16 and 0. And instead, the final game of the season, they sit Peyton Manning and they put in Curtis Painter and they lose this football game. And then they lose in the first round of the playoffs and they go to the guys in the dressing room and Robert Mathis' defensive end is like, you guys remember the Super Bowl winner from three years ago? And the reporter's like, oh, he's like, yeah, but everybody remembers the 72 Dolphins, right? And it obviously hurt the mojo of their locker room. And I wonder what you think about like the energy around the room 
that is surrounding this chase for 70 or yeah, whether you think that it's more risky to not play him and take on whatever manifestation of, uh, yeah, vibe killing that that could potentially take on. Does that momentum go game to game? Do you think that that's a real effect? I think, I think the momentum, especially in a situation like this, when you have a player going after such a significant milestone has mm-hmm. to play into the room, every single player on the ice, you have to know where your, your teammate is. Like I told you two weeks ago, you know, when a guy's going for 20 goals, mm. let alone 70. And when every single news reporter is in your room talking about it, I again, I could totally understand the situation and the vibe if they were in a playoff hunt right now and things are a distraction and 70 goals but they've been in the playoffs for how long now mm-hmm. they've understood their spot. This is the piece that's selling the game to the average fan right now as well. Like if I'm the Toronto Maple Leafs ownership, I would go to Keith right now and say, keep pumping this up. Stop, stop downplaying this situation. But as a team, everyone again needs to be on the same frequency. Your coaching staff has to be excited for it. You, you shouldn't ever just say, Oh, we have 12 healthy fours. No, mm-hmm. Austin's playing. He's in the lineup and we are going to do everything we can to help him reach this milestone. Cause we have his back. Not now all of a sudden, I don't know how their interactions are between each other as a coach and a player, but uh, if Austin Matthews, yeah, but what if he wakes up today and he hasn't had an interaction and all of a sudden mm. it's like, well, am I even playing tonight? Mm. And I'm going for 70. So I don't know if he's already come to him and said, Hey, uh, I'm just going to tell the media, I don't know, because I'm going to mess with them a little bit or I'm going to downplay the situation and not mm-hmm. put more pressure on you. All in all, like just how it's been handled and a couple things. Um, I don't mind the game management at times, like we said a while back, but it does definitely play into the psyche of the room, does definitely play into the players. And going for something like this in essentially a meaningless game should be all the focus put on to Austin to try to get him to where he wants to be and where the league wants him to be. Yeah. Do you think that Keith even has that power, though? Like, he wants to keep Matthews of the lineup? You think he actually even could? Yeah, he better not. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he does. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. If I'm Judd Moldaver right now, his yeah. agent, and they keep him out of the lineup, I'm breaking chairs running into the offices of Toronto Maple Leafs yeah. Sports and Entertainment at the moment. Yeah. Do you think there's any pressure, though, on Matthews? Like, do you think there's a case you made for him – going to the room and being like, guys, I appreciate everything that you've done for me. This has been a crazy successful season. I love, I love the fact that we chased 70 and that I got so close and that you guys were all a part of it, but I, I got, I know what's important and that's the playoffs. I'm going to sit tonight. Like, do you, how do you think something like that goes? I just don't think that's a realistic situation. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't even think that's in Austin's mind. Unless it's like you're, you're scared to know the, what if I attempt yeah. and it does not work out. Dude, I'm, I love you, that you said you, that. I love that you, you said can, the scared part because I, yeah. I thought the same kind of thing yesterday where I was like, I, I wasn't trying to call him a coward if he does it because like, duh, that's way too strong a language. But part of me is like, dude, get in there. Go go play. Don't be afraid of this, you know, like go chase it. Yeah. Well, and that, that's exactly it. It's, it's that old cliche whenever you talk to someone, it's better to try and fail than not to try at all. And that's essentially what the situation he is in at this moment. And if he doesn't do it, I mean, 69 goals. Mm. If he does it and he gets 70, he's in some pretty supreme air with some of the best players and best goal scorers of all time. And it's just better for him to attempt it, Mm -hmm. go play, and whatever happens, happens. Everyone will still respect him. He's still one of the most beloved teammates, the best players in the hockey league, but he has to try to attempt this. And I can't even see that ever being in a guy like Austin Matthews' psyche. It'd be just, hey, I'm going to go try, and if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, I tried my best. Okay, brother. Today is a lot about psyche stuff. Okay, you and I are playing psychologists. We're trying it's to a read. rainy day. Yeah, it is. It's rainy. You know, we got the grunge playing. We're thinking about things like Nirvana. you know, it's a lot of '90s rock, a lot of '90s angst stuff. Nylander doesn't have a goal in ten games. Um, he only has three points during those ten games. He did say this to Jonas Siegel um, a couple of days ago. Uh, he said that he was basically asked if the chase for a hundred points, uh, while in a year that he signed a contract extension, was impacting him. He said, "Quote: I think that's probably played a little bit of a part in it for sure." End quote. Um, he also did go on to say, like he knows that the playoffs matter and all this different stuff, and he has been a playoff performer. But like, that concern you at all? No. Okay. No. It. It. You know. 
myself knowing myself going for milestones back in the day. Now they are pigeon milestones in comparison. Mm-hmm. But when you start to think about it, you start to play the game differently. You're not you're not making the best plays. You're not always be, you're, you're not putting yourself in the situation to succeed the way you were previously. So mm. that's how I see the games with Nylander over the last bit too. He's a lot of home run plays, a lot of holding on to the puck, and he's also not fully dedicated right now. I don't think to the game. He understands they're in the playoffs. Sometimes Willie goes to sleep, and right now I think maybe probably 10, 15 games ago, he thought he would cruise possibly to 100, and at the mm-hmm. moment he's not. And then once you get closer and closer, you start to squeeze the stick. And like I said, you're starting to make more home run plays. You're not making all the little plays or the little things that used to add up to getting you all those points. And now you're in the situation where you're three points away from 100. I hope he does it. But worrying about Willie Nylander going for 100 points comparison to like when you get the refresh of going into a playoff run and you're excited and you're willing to do whatever it takes, mm-hmm. none of that worries me about Willie Willie and the finish to the season. I've seen so many guys go for milestones or come at the end of the year and they're not playing well. The best part about the playoffs is a refresh. It's just a it's a it's a new season. It's a new energy. It's something I miss about hockey is getting to April. You see the trees are coming out. Mm. You know, you see the leaves. You're you're coming to the rink. It's just, it's like a breath of fresh energy. And that's what Willie Nylander will have. And that's why I don't worry about this ending. It is obviously a distraction in his own mind for himself to chase 100 points. And I totally understand that. But him and himself, he's going to be one of the best players coming to the playoff. And then, Looking at the matchup, too, like, Willie could torch this Boston team if he goes off. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the only thing I can relate that to, because I didn't, I don't know, I get career milestones, like, I'm on Willie. Show 100, like, (laughs) none of this stuff matters. The only thing I can kind of equate that to was turning 30, where, like, you're 29, and you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to be 30, I'm going to be 30, I'm going to be 30, and it's like, the closer you get, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to be 30, I'm going to be 30, I'm going to be 30. This is so intense. And my stupid brain, I know, I'm not even lying. This is the most embarrassing thing I've ever admitted on the show. I remember thinking when I was going to turn 30, I was like, I'll never be on a 30 under 30 list. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, it's over for me. I never made one. And so, you, but then you turn 30 and you're like, oh, okay, whatever. It's kind of like refreshed. It's like, there's no more pressure on your age. And you're just kind of like, yeah, it was really well, no difference. No big deal. Here's the thing exact. about milestones though mm-hmm. is, if you're three points away from 100 yeah. and you have seven games remaining, you start to look ahead of, okay, I can not get a point in game seven, yeah. game six, yeah. okay, game five, okay, maybe I can, you know, so you start to go through everything in your brain about the milestone. Mm. And all of a sudden, the milestone could possibly start to scare you or, like I said, changes the way you play. But when you're coming, when you're leading up, just like your birthday, you're leading up to the milestone, you are going through every situation of the what ifs, what nots. And sometimes that's what holds guys back. And some guys, the most, you know, mentally strong of the guys that hit them always power right through it. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying though, is like, once it happens though, it's 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 like, you're like, yeah, you're like, okay, cool, whatever. I'm, I'm normal. So like, I'm not concerned about the idea as much of like the way that you're speaking about these milestones I'm not as concerned if Matthews doesn't hit 70 or if no. Nylander doesn't hit a hundred like that, that's going to have some type of carryover effect into the postseason where they're like, damn it. I didn't get the thing. It's like, no, no, no. Okay. That's done now. It's the new thing. And you know, you're not even going to think twice about it. It's just for legacy and history yeah. of the game. Yeah. In the moment though, you're thinking about this. The second it's over, like I yeah. said, it's like turning 30 where you're like, okay, cool. New thing. Like whatever. All that stuff was actually really dumb. Yeah. Well, you climb, you climb one mountain and you want to go climb another. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what these guys do. This is, this has no effect on going into the playoffs, how they all play, but it is, it is something that you, you I mean, people will talk about for the next 500 years in hockey, these mm-hmm. milestones that guys hit in, in these, in these eras and these times. Mm-hmm. God, I do. I do hope they get it though tonight. So yeah, they're, they're playing Tampa. There is still this game. They are hunting the milestones. I am still invested in, I am interested in it. And sounds by, you know, all things that we're trying to drive at here is like Matthew's going to play Nylander's probably going to play. Um, but sticking with psychology, did you ever, I don't think I've ever asked you this and it's different when you were on the team that like, you know, you've said it before that you think Kane is the most clutch player of all time. Although the team wasn't clutch enough to make the playoffs again. It's like Red Wings, eight years in a row, no playoffs. Yeah. It's not the Red Wings I grew up with, but anyway, um, 
So you've got a guy that you guys had like supreme confidence in, in terms of coming up in the clutch and you guys did these things, but was there a team in particular where like, we got these guys in a mental vice, like there's just no way that this team is beating us. And we just feel even extra confident against this team. Yeah. Vancouver Canucks. Yeah. That was the team. And, uh, you know, they were the probably, they were the better team for sure. In 2009, we went in there as a younger team. We upset them, beat them, and then came back again in 2010. Everyone thought that, you know, that series had a 50, 50 chance of going either way. I think in our minds, we're like, how, how's people even picking the Vancouver Canucks? Mm-hmm. I remember Matt Molson was on a show. This is how much I remember it. He went on NHL network and he picked Vancouver Canucks. And I hated Matt Molson for that. <laughs> I hated. And I played against him for another like yeah. seven years, eight years in the NHL. I'm like, how can this guy yeah. pick the Vancouver Canucks over us? Like we, we own these guys. Tell Kevin, I said that too, by the way. Yeah. And, and what frustrates me a little bit about that is in 2011, we lost half our team and then they played against a shell of ourselves in 2011 and yeah, the whatever. Yeah. But that was the team when we showed up into a playoff run, we felt that we had them, like you said, on a mental vice. The team that did that to us on the flip side was your old Detroit Red Wings. Uh-huh. When we were younger playing against them in the regular season, we couldn't beat them in the regular season. I was like, what, why can't we beat these guys? And then we get into the playoffs and they beat us in five games. They teach us a lesson. And then the following year in 2010, San Jose beat them. And I remember our whole team was like, thank God San Jose beat them. Because that was the one team deep down. I don't think we wanted to play just knowing about their pedigree, how they play in the playoffs, those guys that have been on so many cup runs. And Detroit had Chicago in a bit of a mental pretzel for all those years leading up. They had all the cups. And then obviously when we go play San Jose instead of uh, Detroit, Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's a different mindset going into that playoffs or into that playoff series. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's my point of curiosity with this. I'd love to get the truth serum from the Leafs. Like, Hey, how did you feel when you guys got into the dressing room last night, game was over and you knew you were playing the Boston Bruins instead of the Florida Panthers. Like, was your reaction, hey, you know, the Panthers beat us last year, and they're actually the younger, better, more balanced, d- deeper team? Or was it, oh, my God, no, these guys, they own us. And, like, you know, again, no one would say it outwardly, uh, but deep down, like, privately, I-, I do wonder if that's the feeling. There could be some piece to it where they are mentally, like, oh, my gosh, I'd rather face the, the Bruins than the Panthers. But if I'm looking at lineups, that is the best case scenario Mm -hmm. for you to play the Boston Bruins. The Boston Bruins, like look at Danton Heinen on their Mm -hmm. first line, or you know uh, Morgan Geeky, Trent Frederick, all good players. But if you go throughout both lineups, Boston is a very well coached team. They got guys bought into their system. But if you start to get into a playoff matchup and you look at uh, possible line matching and combinations and all that, this is, I think, the best case scenario for a Toronto Maple Leafs team that has mm-hmm. more firepower, they're deeper, and I think overall the back ends are, you know, you could say Boston's is better. I think they're bought into the system a bit better, and they, they play as a collective unit, uh, and they defend overall mm-hmm. better. But I like the matchup in its entirety better than playing against the Florida Panthers. So, Looking at that side, oh, which jersey I'm playing, I'm sure there's a lot of guys I'd rather play this or that team. But then if you go into the details of the matchup, the Leafs are the better team on paper. Totally on paper. agree. Totally agree, man. These are the centers. This is the, the center depth for the Boston Bruins. Pavel Zaka, Charlie Coyle, Morgan Geeky, Jesper Boakvist. Yeah, <laughs> I looked at it today. I didn't like, even know some of the players on their team. Yeah, it's, yeah I don't know who Jakob Lauko is. Or Jason Megna, who is makes up the fourth line. Um, yeah. I, I don't know those dudes. I'm not familiar with the. Now that I've said this, they're going to play this in Boston's dressing room, and it's going to be like on the oh, yeah. on the Bruins Stanley Cup DVD. <laughs> Remember when they have those? It's like, <laughs> here's the quote of this idiot saying this stupid thing. You're like, oof, that's oh, tough. The Seagulls drafted to the Bruins. We hate him. We traded him for yeah. a bag of pot. Yeah, exactly. Look at these two morons. You're you're now. <laughs> You're going to be Matt Molson to the Bruins guys. They're like, really? Are you going to say no, it's the I, best case scenario? They're, like, they're, I think they're the best coach team in the NHL. Yeah. No, do you Jim know? Montgomery is an incredible coach. Everywhere he goes, he figures out what to do with his Yeah, gas him up. Gas him up. Yeah. That's, but yeah. That, that's the difference is 
one team has the better players, and I think if they win the series, they win on skill. Yeah. The other team has the better coaching, and if they win the series, they win on coaching. That's how I feel that series will go because if you go and do a game five or game six and you can pretty much flip Nylander on a third line, like we've mm-hmm. said, and they've done it a little bit in the past, or, and you can start to create more line matching that gives these Boston teams with like certain players on third and fourth lines hard matchups mm-hmm. i can't see why the leafs can't beat the boston Bruins. i just think it's a way better matchup than playing the florida panthers it's not yeah. even close I, I think there's there's two like or sorry i should say three things i do think that boston has the coaching advantage like i just i don't think that there's any leaf fans that can say that they have a huge uh amount of faith in sheldon keith especially since it's been multiple post seasons where you felt like damn he got out coached like that that hasn't been that's been a running theme of these exits under sheldon keith um, two is that psychological edge. Like, I think that David Pasternak looks at the Leafs and he just goes breakfast, you know, the yum, yum. I torture this team. I score every single time. I'm not thinking I play free and easy. I'm, I don't even think he's older than I, I think maybe he's slightly older than Nylander. Like you, but either way, he's just like, I'm his big brother. Essentially. I'm the big brother to the Leafs. I'm going to go out there and rip it out. And then Marshan knows that he's in their head. So like those two guys, yeah. I think particularly are like, Oh yeah, we we're, we're, they're the mental vice guys when it comes to this team. And then lastly, it's just goaltending is, you know, Toronto's goaltending has made me pretty nervous recently. And I feel like, yeah, Boston is going to be pretty fine in that area, but everything else, like I would say, yeah, tilts towards Toronto or is at least, you know, like the blue line, a, a draw. Yeah, the blue line and like you said, the goaltending, that stuff can slip on its side super fast, just mm-hmm. like you saw against uh, the Florida Panthers, momentum and if a team's in and or if David Pasternak gets smashed in the first shift by Bertuzzi and he's not feeling his game is on, or just something. like That's why playoffs are the best, is you can think something's going to go one way and all of a sudden, Samsonov's hot or Wolves hot, and then uh, the the two bosses, really Swayman and Allmark, you know, they can't stop anything similar to the way it was against Florida in the last series. So, mm-hmm. it, goaltending is funny in the playoffs. Some goalies can handle the pressure, some can. I remember, you know, talking about Luongo. Luongo at times was great against us. Everyone's like, oh, he's a massive goalie advantage, mm-hmm. and then sometimes he was letting in bad goals, or you know, we were we're putting up seven on him. So, yeah. it it really depends on. Uh, again, back to matchups, time after goals, puck management, game management, how bought in the teams are to it at that moment and if they're going to raise their level. And that's why, you know, I hope the Leafs can do it. But I see a, a guy like Austin Matthews, if he gets hot, if he gets hot in that first round, he's potting four or five against those goalies. Now all of a sudden their confidence tanks. Maybe it makes his goalies feel better. So those things can all turn on a dime. Mm-hmm. They really can. But you're talking about uh, Brad and, and Pasternak. Those two guys are, you know, they are playoff hockey. Mm-hmm. Those guys understand what it takes. They drive the bus. And if you're looking at two guys to drive the bus against the Leafs and drive them nuts, it's those two. But they're going to Leafs. You got Max Domi now. You mm-hmm. got Tyler Bertuzzi. You brought these guys in to try to combat that type of play and that type of atmosphere. And you hope they can do it because I think they can. I, I Like, I... I love them playing the Bruins way more than playing the Panthers. Yeah, that's where I think I settled with it too. It just feels weird to say because honestly, you're so tortured as anybody that's followed the Leafs is you're like trying to be confident or, you know, even semi-pleased with anything. You're like, you want to, you know, punish yourself. <laughs> you're like, no, hit yourself with a stick for thinking that something could be okay because this is bad, this is bad, this is bad mentality to have. Yeah, and speaking of those uh, that those series for you guys, I had Corey Schneider on uh, last week. Great guy, really cerebral dude. Uh, awesome gonna, guy. Yeah, really yeah. awesome guy. But yeah, we were looking, I was looking back through his first playoff start and yeah, it was because you guys chased Luongo, uh, I think 6-1 in game four. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, you you humanized him a little bit. Um, last thing before you go, um, I... I <laughs> This Hart Trophy is insane. Like you're gonna have Kucherov with 100 assists tonight, um, or potentially, anyways. Um, you're gonna have Matthews potentially with 70 goals. You got McDavid sitting on 100 assists. Like these are things that again only have been done by uh, Orr, Gretzky, and Lemieux. Um, you've got an incredible season from Nathan McKinnon. Uh, like, do you care? Like, do you track it? Like, do you have a guy that you think it should be? Well, if you hear Biz or you hear all these guys talk, it was McKinnon. If you hear other guys talk, it's Kucherov. You know, obviously there's homers to each side. At the start, when I was looking at the whole McDavid thing, I think when you were talking to me two weeks ago, 
I said, if McDavid gets 100 assists, you, mm-hmm. it, it, four people have done it in the history, but now Kucherov does is that five. Does that technically devalue that? I think so. Two people have done it now in one so. year where it's been done by three in the history. So I don't know. I still like Nathan McKinnon. Mm-hmm. Looking at the entirety overall of what he's done, he's a plus 34. You can also look at Matthews, he's a plus 32. If you look at Nikita Kucherov, plus 10. So if you're looking at the five-on-five five play, uh, where they're at with goals, I don't know. Like At the time, I was with Connor McDavid. Now I think I'm looking at Nathan McKinnon as the guy that has elevated his game above McDavid at times this season. Uh-huh. Now, I still think McDavid's the best player on the planet, but watching when McKinnon is on, he is he is a madman possessed. It is like game time. I am taking it over. So I just think he's the guy who optically to me looks the closest hockey player on the planet to Connor McDavid, mm-hmm. and he's backed it up five on five. He's backed it up with over 50 goals, you know, 130. What is he? He might get 140 points, right? Or are they done now? Uh, I think that, well, I think he's done, but I don't know for sure. I don't have in front yeah, of Yeah, I don't know. I, if you, if you told me right this second to vote, it would be McKinnon, but you mm-hmm. could, you could give it to Kucherov. I could make a case for Kucherov. You could make it for McDavid. Hey, back to, back to lightning. That team scares me. More. Yeah, for sure. No, I think that's actually a real positive for the Leafs is that the, the Bolts and the Panthers have to play each other. And like, if you're, if you're really trying to dream this thing out, I think that the ultimate scenario for the Leafs is that Tampa knocks out the Panthers, and that well, they, have a, they have them in a mental pretzel always. They're the big brothers. Though. Yeah, that's that's what I mean. Is but I still think like Toronto having now beat Tampa and the way they match up against them, like that Tampa team, you know, you beat them a year ago and Vasilevsky scary and they're all playing scary, but they go through a, a first round series war with you know Florida and that, they, that goes six seven games. Toronto's beat. Tampa before, uh, you know, they've had a pretty good track record against Vasilevsky. They, they made him look very human last year in the playoffs. I, I don't know. I, that, I don't hate that one. So yeah, that would be my dream, but I, I'm not trying to get too far ahead of myself and plan this thing out. Cause you know, best laid plans, but either yeah, way, I, no, I do so. think that this broke out. Correct. It's just, you know, the, the psychological stuff is obviously very, very big and yeah, I'm fine with McKinnon. Uh, I think it's super tight. Uh, I have it. I have it. Matthews one, McKinnon two, and then McDavid three, and then Kucherov like you know a, a pretty distant fourth, just because he's got over half his points on the power play. Like his numbers five on five aren't even close to any of these guys, and like the primary yeah, point I, stuff. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I have him probably three or four. Yeah, um, it's just it's funny to me because again, like you know, you look at all this stuff, and McDavid still has the highest primary points percentage, and like <laughs> it's like okay, he's only got thirty goals, but. How many of those goals were basically using like Zach Hyman as a bumper, like a, a <laughs> pool player where he's like, yeah, and then off him and then in the net. It's like, he's almost doing it harder where he's like elevating the challenge. Yeah. So to me, 120th in league scoring in November. Yeah. That's what I, I know. That's what, that's what I mean is if he doesn't get off to a slow start, it's like we're it's doing not even a question. Yeah. That's right. what I mean. It's just, it's just so funny because I, I do think that as good as McKinnon is and man, I, I like, I really respect McKinnon's game and I think he, he does everything the right way. I'm glad that he is going to get a heart trophy in some way because it would be weird for him to finish his career without one. But yeah, I think that the, the best statistical case to me is actually Matthews. Um, the best like feel good case and fine deserving, but also like aesthetic choice is McKinnon. But every year I'm like, poor McDavid is anybody will try to find any excuse to be like, it's not your year. He's just a hundred yeah. assists. So like, no, 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 you're third. It's like, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I'll see you next year. I mean, two weeks ago I picked him. Yeah. That's what I mean. Oh. <laughs> He's right there. Anyways. I mean, he's right there. But he, you think about how valuable he is to the team, which technically mm-hmm. is that that's what it means. That team was how far out of it in yeah. November. Yeah. And he was in 120th. And to where his team has come today, you can you can clearly make a case he is the most valuable player to a team in the yeah. league by a mile. Well, well that's, but, that's the, but that's what I mean. If you do that every year, like who's the most valuable? It's like, well, then just hand him the award before the season starts. You know, yeah. like you can't have it that way because, yeah, it's no. very clear. I think he was even dinged up at the beginning of the season. There was questions of his health, but like, yeah, imagine they were in that hole and McDavid had to miss a month. It's just, you know, you might as well be getting ready for the draft. Um, so yeah, pretty clear. Uh, anyways, buddy, we'll be talking to you a bunch during the playoffs. Thanks for making time today. You take care. Yeah. Christopher Stieg of the clever app, which again, you can go to the app store and download for free. Uh, also uh, partnering with a group called quench and, uh, yeah, two time Stanley cup champion.